Blog Talk Radio. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Gold Call Show. This is your host, Peter Ekstrom, with more tales from the front lines of sales. You know, in our Gold Call studio today, we have an honored guest that I'm sure you've heard of, the one and only Mr. Tom Hopkins. Tom Hopkins is a public speaker in the field of sales training since 1974. Over the years, Tom has had the good fortune to train over 4 million students on five continents. That's amazing. Tom Hopkins is the author of 18 books, including How to Master the Art of Selling and Selling for Dummies. His first book, How to Master the Art of Selling, has sold over 1.6 million copies and has been translated into 10 different languages. It is used as a textbook in sales and marketing classes and has required reading for new salespeople by sales and management professionals in a wide variety of industries. We are indeed privileged to have such a respected sales effort like Tom Hopkins appear in our show. And during our broadcast today, Tom will share with us his perspective of the sales profession, what has changed over the past 40 years, and certainly what standard sales practices still apply to 21st century selling. And with that, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our guest, Tom Hopkins. Hello, Tom. Hello, Peter, and I'm excited to be on your program. I've heard such glowing comments about it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I'm blushing already. Thanks so much for joining us today. You know, uh, Tom, I'm a longtime fan and consider it an honor to speak with such an esteemed expert on the subject of professional selling. Absolutely. Well, thank you. You made thank my you. day. <laughs> now, to start things off, for those in the audience today that may not be familiar with you, I was wondering if you might uh, let's start from the very beginning. You've had a long and storied career in sales, and I know you started out as a uh, uh, in sales, in direct sales, before becoming a prominent speaker. I'm just curious, um, how did you start your sales career? Uh, we all have somebody to blame for getting us into this business. I was wondering who, who, who you placed the blame on. Who was a major influence that got you into your sales career? And what did you do when you started? Well, I think what happened to me is when I uh, quit college after 90 days and came home, my father was so upset with me. And he basically said, son, without a college degree, you'll never amount to anything, and I'll always love you because you are my son, even though I know you'll never amount to anything. And, of course, that was my first, Peter, motivational talk because that is kind of lighting the fire that I said, oh, yeah, I'll prove I can become a success. And I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, 90 days of college, I'm 17, and uh, my uncle gave me a chance to be an iron worker carrying steel on bridge decks in Los Angeles. And so for a year, uh, I uh, carried steel. Hardest physical labor on the planet, Peter, i got to tell you that. And uh, I did Tom, that you for mean a year. Than cold calling? It is. Well, <laughs> okay. the rejection is a little less, but it's more, much more physical when you carry steel. But So I did that for a <laughs> year. Imagine. And, uh, you know, my dad was proud of my work ethic. You know, he came over to my little apartment and he says, you know, Tom, I was so disappointed. Your mother and I wanted you to go to college, but you decided to not go to college. Okay, so you're in sales. And uh, do you really like this? I said, you know, Dad, I really love it, and I feel when I learn and what figure out what I'm doing, I can do well. And uh, so I I, uh, I got my real estate license. I failed the exam three times, but I finally passed. And uh, all of a sudden, I was in the selling of real estate, which uh, was a wonderful choice for me. Uh, I hope everybody listening finds their niche in life and the niche in life i feel is when you find something you love to do that you can earn a good income at but it's not work i mean i don't think i've ever worked a day in my life although my schedule is is very strenuous but i love what i do and i'm sure you do as well well it's a rarity and i think i've heard it said that uh, if you uh, find a job you'll love you'll never have to work a day in your life perfect right on right? I think Sam Clemens, yep. to go one step further, said, if you can make your vocation a vacation, you, you live a happy life. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm going to write that down. I'm, I'm getting some new material, Peter. Thank you, thank you, well, thank you. I don't know you. if it was Sam Clemens or Mark <laughs> Twain. You know, he had a, he had a pseudonym. So, uh, but at any rate, yeah, if you make your vocation a vacation, 
You'll live a happy life. Yeah, that's so great. I'm writing that down. Now, I had read somewhere that you set a real estate sales record. And uh, I heard that you sold at least one house a day. Now, you were in the, for our listeners, uh, Tom was in the uh, residential real estate business, right? Uh, were you a real estate agent or a broker, uh, Tom? No, I was just an agent. I did spent agent, eight okay. years in the in, in the real estate field, just working as an agent. Okay. Now, uh, tell us about the sales record you uh, you set, uh, selling at least one new house a day. That's three hundred and what three hundred and six. Uh, God, I sound like a I sound like a presidential candidate when I don't know how many <laughs> days there are in a week or how many states in the union. Uh, so that's more than three hundred and sixty five houses in one year. Um, how in the world did you manage that process? Tell us about that. Well, first of all, that was my fourth year, and I had spent three years building momentum, three years of, of working with clients, and and uh, the, the interest rates dropped drastically the, the year I did this, and so people came out of the woodwork, and I was so fortunate, Peter, to have a lot of referrals. I, I treated my people good, and uh, people say, if you're looking to get a home, you got to go see Tom, and... Uh, so it all just built in that fourth year. My manager comes to me in December, uh, and he goes, are you aware that you are on target to do one home sale a day average for the year? And I wasn't. I didn't count stuff like that. I just went out and worked. And I said, no. Right. He goes, well, if you do it, no one's ever done it. And so then I really put my nose to the grindstone. I said, I'm going to do this. And as soon as the National Association of Realtors, Peter, heard that I did it, the phone right. started ringing, mm. and they wanted me to speak. So that's how my career started. Wow. Well, you want to, people want to, uh, you know, bask in your success, right? Show show me what I'm doing wrong and what I can do right to uh, achieve that level of success. That's no easy uh, goal to accomplish. Not at all. You're exactly right. You know, you have to be really dedicated. So I'm thinking, you know, Tom, in your opinion, right? Can you really sell anything to anyone? No, in fact, that was something that came up many years ago, and I have to say that I think the strength in selling comes from your honesty, belief, and conviction, and the reason I did so well in real estate is, number one, I believe everybody should own a home. Number two, I believe that it's the best investment they could make uh, rather than paying rent, and so I had a strong conviction and a, a total belief, and and I, I totally believe that that's why I did so well in real estate. Now there are products that I could sell, and I think I could do well in almost any company that had a good product or service. But I also have to feel I got to believe and burn in my heart that this is good for the buyer, and and I, I could do well in financial services because the average American is so desperate in debt and need someone to get them straightened out financially. So that I know I could do real well in. But there are some products I don't think I could buy into, and I don't think you can sell something unless you really buy it first, emotionally and then, of course, a belief system. Hmm. So in other words, you have to have a passion for what you're representing and think that it delivers value and solves a problem that is good for the prospect uh, in order to really have a shot at closing the well, sale. And you, sure, and you know that word passion. Uh, I played golf with Wayne Gretzky, who lives around the corner from me in California, and a and n- nice man. And so, you know, after I got to know him, I'm coming home after golf, and I said, Wayne, you know, you changed the, the sport of hockey in our country almost single-handedly with your wonderful play. What right. do you think the reason is you were so great? And he said, Tom, I had a passion for all aspects of hockey. I had a passion for practice, a passion for winning, a passion for losing. And and so that word passion, I think, is so critical to be successful in life. I couldn't agree more. Now, when you were playing hockey with Wayne Gretzky, uh, did he did he with a ready checking? No, not hockey, golf. I played golf. Oh, golf. Oh, you didn't get on the you didn't get on the ice with him. No, gosh, no. Right. Jeez, I can't he, even he tried skate. To... <laughs> did, did, I couldn't did he try to make it around the course. Wood? <laughs> that must he, have been an interesting conversation, to say the least. Oh, he, he he drives a great ball. He's got a beautiful swing. I bet swing he does. And he, he's a very nice man, very humble and very sincere. And, you know, I, we liked him a lot. And uh, 
we moved from California back to Arizona full time, so I don't I don't get the chance to see him. But uh, good man, great man. Well, what Wayne Gretzky does in terms of the conversation is that he reinforces uh, the aspect that you need passion to succeed in anything. If you feel it, if you don't feel it, you can't sell it. Or before you can sell it, if you don't have the passion, you can't say it. And speaking is an integral part of the sales process, from the cold call through the negotiation, the presentation, certainly the close, and most importantly, the delivery of the product and, uh, and customer follow-up. And how much more important, now we're in a day and age now of texting, electronic uh, communications. Uh, God, I, I can't go anywhere, Tom, without seeing somebody with their head down in their lap with something that they're clicking on their, with their thumbs. And, look, I don't want to date myself, but, uh, you know, to me, I'm old school. It was always about uh, face-to-face selling and certainly communications over the phone. But what I'm finding is that salespeople are not as polished or uh, rehearsed in their verbal communication skills. So in your opinion, I mean, how much of a negative effect has the age of electronic communications had upon the sales process specific to uh, co-calling and negotiating a closed sale? Well, first of all, I, I believe that uh, there are a lot of people that are in the field of sales or marketing that in a way hide behind technology. You see, you don't hurt me if you say no on the telephone or in an email but when it's an in-person contact this fear of rejection holds so many people back uh, i personally believe sure you, you must use technology you must be up to date and speed but i also feel that they'll never ever take the place of getting out and meeting people in person of making the call uh, learning phraseology dialogue uh, what you uh, teach and do so beautifully but all of this is part of selling now there will i think peter be some industries that because of high technology they may become not We're are you still on. Are there oh okay yeah. cuz i heard it heard like something cut cut off okay I was, but that, i really that was just I was just a sunspot, Tom, uh, interrupting oh. our <laughs> satellite oh, okay. communication. <laughs> Keep okay. going. But, no, I, I really feel that the, the need in the higher-priced products, for example, in the real estate or in buying an automobile or in uh, buying financial services, I think the average consumer wants a human being, not just the electronic transaction. So. Uh, though some industries may be affected, I feel that there'll still always be a need for this wonderful person called salesperson. So there's no chance that uh, robots will replace us. I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, I'm of the same opinion. I don't care what new gizmo that uh, that they invent. I don't think they'll ever be able to replace the uh, value of human contact, the the delivery, exactly. right? You've heard it. Uh, it. It's all in the delivery. You know, the, the ability to communicate is everything. I, I think Lee Iacocca said that. And I just can't think of any automated means or electronic communications that's going to replace the value of, uh, you know, the, the communications, that interpersonal communications. That's That's the word I was looking for. Uh, I don't think there's a, a gizmo out there or even on the horizon that's going to replace that at all. The effectiveness. No, I, I don't either, Peter. I think you're totally on. Thank God. So we don't need a union then? No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Our jobs are safe. Well, you know, yeah, really. other than the impact that electronic communications has had on the sales profession, well, you know, from this perspective, I think that, yeah, I agree with you, uh, that uh, salespeople seem to rely on, it a bit, rely on it a bit more than they should. Other processes also come into uh, into play as well. And based on your observations and t- working with so many salespeople around the world, what are some of the other significant changes that you've noticed with selling in the 21st century compared to when uh, you and I started our careers uh, so long ago? So long ago. Keep it at that. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Keep um, it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this. Um, the average consumer is so much more well-educated than they used to be as far as finding what they need on the Internet. And so, again, I come back to the fact that it's 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 a, something that's going to be out there, but I also feel that there are people that uh, want to do business with a human being, not the Internet. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got to really be good, though, and, you know, your, your dialogue on the, and the importance of the telephone uh, phraseology 
Uh, it's more critical today than ever before because it's so easy to say no to a voice unless that voice captures you properly with what they say, the questions they ask, the probing they do. But I, I come back to the fact that I think the profession of selling will always be in existence, and I think that some people might need to look and change. But be, but I found over all these years, Peter, that the, the strategies, techniques, questions, they fit almost any situation and in selling, so you can easily change if your industry seems to be flattening. You might have to do a little bit of search and change. You know, it's interesting you should mention that because most of the content that I've been exposed to for sales method training, um, and let's just call it that, uh, is that it's all on the sunny side. You know, all things work uh, if you apply a particular sales method. Uh, but I've also heard a quote, can't remember who who gave it to me, but, uh, you know, basically good sales technique does not sell bad product. Exactly. Well, that comes back. Right? That that comes back to what I said earlier. I I can't tell you the number of times I've had an interview where they've had call-ins, and I'll get this question. You know, I'm thinking of going into sales. Where can I make the most money? And I say, stop. Don't even think about that. You've got to think about what do I love to do and what do I believe in, and the money will come to you as a byproduct of the service that you give and the belief that you have. So when you're looking at a product or service, again, it, it comes down to what do I get excited about? What do I want to own? What can I sit at a table and with pure honesty look across the table at the consumer and let them know that they're making a wise decision to make this investment in the product or service that I'm offering? That's an excellent point. An excellent point. So we need to be cognizant of the changes in our business the competition, you know, the industry landscape, in order to remain flexible and open to ideas that can help us adjust to these changes. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't, here's another quote. I'm full of quotes today, Tom. I'm taking over for, I'm giving you a break today. with <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you don't like the view, right, change your seat. If you don't <laughs> like the view, change your seat. That's now, wonderful. You know, there are circumstantial elements in business that impact the sales process. And you can certainly be passionate, you can be energetic and motivated and driven to put your foot forth and step through the door and make the effort. But, again, uh, all of that energy in the world and ambition, rather, uh, isn't going to do you much good if you're not cognizant of the business that you're in. That's exactly and, right. Uh, you know, and I and I see a lot of salespeople that I work with, uh, they really don't have a connection to the business that they're in to the point where they're able to communicate effectively with a prospect. And just to elaborate on that, I mean, whenever I ins uh, help a client understand and build a foundation for growing their business, I, I call the four pillars of success. You got to know your business, you got to know your prospect, you got to know your product, and you got to know your competition. And you have to understand and pull all the information together that builds a holistic picture of the industry that you're in uh, so that you can properly assess what your uh, reasonable chances of success are. And not so much to understand uh, what to do to succeed, but also to understand what not to do to keep from failing. What are your thoughts along those lines? Well, I just per perfectly agree. Um, Many people can't seem to handle success much more than they can failure, and a lot of them self-destruct when they start becoming successful if their self-image and self-esteem hasn't increased to be worthy of this thing called success. Uh, I, I know one of my challenges when all of a sudden I started making really darn good money in real estate was I had to really do a lot of study to make sure I didn't make mistakes because many people start making money and make mistakes with it, and and I, I fortunately had mentors. Now, you talked about this earlier. Um, I found uh, Earl Nightingale to help me with my self-image, and he, of course, uh, is, has passed away, but he was a great, great teacher of leadership. Indeed. 
Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, Doug Edwards, Mr. Edwards, was uh, my next door neighbor when I moved here to That's Phoenix, right. not even knowing, not even knowing where he lived, which is an amazing story. But anyway, he gave me such insight on the art of selling. And uh, in a way, I feel I've been blessed to be around people that are smarter than I am but help me go to the next level. And even in my little company today, the average person has been with me over 35 years. And so we're we're like a family, and we've grown together and, you know, went through life together. But uh, I, I really believe that this butterfly called success that's so fleeting – you know, you really have to study and you have to be, I think, aware of, as you mentioned, all the different aspects of your business, your industry, the changes, uh, how's your competition, what are their creative uh, ideas that you can be sure you beat and work over. But a lot of this all builds to that one thing, you know, being more successful. No doubt. It takes, uh, it takes a lot of ingredients to make a good beef stew, doesn't it? <laughs> It's more You're than just loaded power. with them today, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm walking in your footsteps today, and it's all coming out. You see, you bring out you bring out the best in me, Tom. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you know, I spent uh, over the past uh, couple of weeks couple of weeks uh, since we uh, scheduled this uh, show today and uh, you know I was uh, up on the internet and I just happened to come across one of your uh, videos that uh, discussed the seven fundamentals of. And uh, I have them in order here, and uh, we don't have time uh, today to go over each and every one of them, but uh, just for the benefit of our audience is that uh, I think it pays attention to go and check out Tom's uh, uh, video on seven fundamentals of selling. And at the very, very top, I see prospecting. Number two, original contact, the first impression you give to a prospect. Qualification, who can buy. Presentation, handling objections, closing getting referrals. And something specific, Tom, that I'm hoping you might expand on is uh, the SPR PDR formula. What's that all about? <laughs> oh, What's that all about? Okay, well, you know, we're in a we're in a world of acronyms today. Uh, everything's <laughs> an acronym. So I thought, well, I'm going to take SPR PDR. And at the seminars when I teach it, I usually say SPR. Now that P in the middle is very important. And some of you are not peeing properly, and we're going to work on that pee. Then, once you get an SPR, you have to do a good PDR. So the S in S uh, stands for stimulus, meaning you've got to give your mind and your your brain and, and, and your intellect a good stimulus, which is, again, education. Then the pause is the study time you spend after you get the stimulus, internalizing it, then the response is the R in SPR, where you come up with all the right responses. Now, how do you get SPR, stimulus, pause, response? You PDR, which is what all great athletes, all great anyone, they practice, they drill, and they rehearse. So stimulus, pause, response, and you must practice, drill, rehearse. It's kind of like uh, how do you get the Carnegie Hall? <laughs> yeah. Practice, practice makes perfect. And you know, and in ter- <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, I wanted to touch upon uh, prospecting and specifically uh, the original contact that a salesperson has, uh, the introduction. And there's something that you uh, expanded on out of your seven fundamentals and the SPR PDR formula was uh, the um, freedom of expression. Freedom of expression. That caught that caught my attention. Well, and I think you know this, I like the word. That? Well, I like the the word freedom. We are all we're living in a country of free enterprise, which really is right. the freedom to become successful or fail. And if you do, no one's upset with you. But mm-hmm. um, I I just think that you know our country is such a fabulous place, and many people that are right now maybe listening to us have not travel to third world countries or maybe have not traveled to countries that don't allow free enterprise and capitalism so they haven't had like we have the the chance to see what a difference it is 
Uh, I recently got back from Leningrad. I, I was I wanted to go to Russia for a lot of reasons, but uh, had a chance to just really study and analyze the differences. And you have no idea unless you're there what a beautiful glowing place we live in compared to the other countries in the world. Um, and of course, I, I guess I'm a kind of a uh, fanatic on being proud to be an American and believing that even though we got some challenges, which we always will have, we still got the best game on earth. I uh, God bless America. Uh, yeah, amen. It is indeed the land of opportunity. You have a right to make the call to a prospect. You have a right to ask a question, and you have a right to expect an honest answer. Uh, we don't always get that, but how about this? We have a right to expect an answer. <laughs> what it That's is that right. we do with that answer, we still have rights and freedom to in order to overcome objections or any resistance the prospect might have, or on the occasion when the prospect decides to buy, and we certainly want to you know, express uh, what it takes to consummate the sale and then uh, move on with delivery. But it's, a, you know, the free enterprise system, I, I think it's a self-healing system, Tom, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look throughout history, uh, you know, we've got a series of ups and downs from the depths of the Depression in 29 to, uh, in recent times, the uh, the uh, bu- housing bubble burst uh, in 2008, which, uh, you know, so there's a lot of people listening to broadcast today who might be thinking, well, the reason why I can't succeed is because it's a soft economy. And statistically, they might be right, but uh, maybe they could use a little bit of a pep talk, Tom, to kind of make them realize that every single day buying and selling happens not only here but around the world, and that opportunity is on the other side of a door if you're only willing to turn the doorknob. Exactly. And, you know, I'm not an economist, uh, Peter, but all my friends that study the economy, everybody totally is convinced that the last quarter of this year is going to start heating up, and 2014 has the earmarkings of being a really great year for those people that work, those people that are focused, those people that have their long- and short-term goals set, and, and I hope anyone that's listening will realize that many people don't really get moving till everything else starts moving. And I totally believe that successful people, they don't let market conditions, the economies, the, the, the negativity affect them. They know, I've got to make this many calls, I've got to see this many people, and at the end of the year I'll make this much money, and I'm going to continue to be successful. You have to... Keep moving on and, uh, and and moving forward. Uh, you can't. You know, I think that you know, people, some salespeople, not all of them, so I don't want to insult our listening audience. All right, only some of you out there are uh, find the excuses that it takes not to make that call. It's easy to do that. It's easy to fall into a funk. It's easy to let negative talk about the economy affect your motivation and subsequently demotivate you from taking any action or steps towards making contact with a prospect or closing a sale. I say not. I say that your job as a salesperson is to make the effort and to practice the techniques like your seven fundamentals, Tom, in order to come up with a selling system. And that's really what people need. Wouldn't you agree that they really need a process? Here's an old proverb. Here's another quote for you, okay? (laughs) From the book of Proverbs, he who works the process awaits the result in peace. Think about that. Oh, that's great. And, you know, it's so true. Uh, I would have never been able to do what I did had I not followed a system, a strategy. Uh, And, of course, again, I found mentors. Uh, I would hope everybody listening to both of us today would – I'd love to invite them to come to our website. Uh, We've got some research materials that are totally complimentary. There's no charge for them. And if they go to the free resource uh, part of my my, uh, web – they'll be able to say, hey, I'm going to order this, order this. There's no charge for it because my goal is to have anyone in sales have the tools to become successful. Well, you segue nicely into the closing minutes that we have uh, for today's show, and I was just uh, wondering if you might uh, let us in on uh, Tom Hopkins International. Uh, what are your future plans? And uh, maybe tell us uh, about the next interesting place in the world that you're scheduled to go to. 
Well, I I will never retire, Peter. I, I call retirement a fancy name for an early death. So I will always want to be on a plane, always want to address my audiences. And, you know, my 18th book is just starting to really move. And so, you know, I'm having a great life. I've got a wonderful wife and wonderful family. And so I've been very blessed. And um, so, again, I- anyone listening, I hope you realize that it's all out there for the people that make the decision. And get mentors, get people that you can learn from. And, and Peter, you've had such a wonderful 30 minutes. It's gone just like about a minute. So, gosh, I enjoyed it. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you as well. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your insight. I know we all uh, took a valuable lesson and uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us on the Gold Call Show today. And I'm sure our audience appreciates your insight as well and has learned something, too. Uh, I guess once we stop learning, uh, we die, right? And uh, exactly. I really like your, your quote about retirement is a fancy name for an early <laughs> death. Oh, my. See, I gave you some – see, it's quid quo pro together today for us, you and I. Right? I'll give you a quote. If that one's a beauty, you know, retirement – is just another fancy name for an early death. God, I tell you, I couldn't agree with you more there. <laughs> now, if those listening in today would like to continue to learn more about Tom Hopkins and Tom Hopkins International, please visit Tom on the web at TomHopkins.com. That's TomHopkins.com. And i also like to let you know that Tom has a special free gift for our listening audience today, his new ebook publication titled Closing Sales is Easy Once You Know How. Closing Sales is Easy Once You Know How. This is an ebook. Now, to get your copy of Tom's new ebook, I want you to simply email me. It's that easy. And just mention Tom Hopkins in the subject of your email and send that on to me, your host here, Pete Ekstrom, at sales at dealbuilders.com. Pete Ekstrom. But my email is sales at dealbuilders.com, and we will get you Tom's new ebook titled Closing Sales is Easy Once You Know How. I guess with all, <laughs> with all the right tools, all things possible, right, Tom? Exactly, Peter. Thank you so much for a wonderful experience. Well, thanks again for joining us, uh, Tom, and thanks to everyone for listening in to another edition of the Gold Call Show. And we hope to have you back here with us again soon for more tales from the front lines of sales. This is Pete Ekstrom saying so long for now, and happy hunting. <laughs>